Hi, Ventura. With the rising COVID cases in our local hospitals and also with the recent MDHHS orders, the elders have received more questions from people in our church family regarding plans moving forward. Are we going to shut down the church? Are we going to require mass? Does this apply at all to us or any of our other discipleship opportunities? The elders met this past week, and I want to say I was very encouraged by the meeting. And I was encouraged because while we as individuals would apply things differently in our personal lives, we left that time in unanimity on what we believe to be the best plan for our entire church family. Now, I believe the only way that that could happen is if we maintain the gospel as of supreme importance. You know, this year, these past eight months have been the most stressful time to pastor. And in some ways, it's been that way, not simply because people have disagreements, but it's how we articulate our differing viewpoints. In our church family, we have people who believe that social distancing and wearing masks is vital. We have people in our church family who believe that we ought to go back to normal. And these beliefs are genuinely held. But the concern of our elders is that we don't allow these beliefs to eclipse the gospel of Jesus Christ. In looking at Romans 14 and 15, and even in 1 Corinthians 8 and 9, we receive some of Paul's pastoral wisdom on how to handle matters like these when genuine believers strongly disagree, but this is not issues of heresy. The question in our situation isn't simply, do we wear a mask or not wear a mask? But instead, the question is, is when Christians who have committed to each other's godliness, when church members disagree on secondary matters, how do we address our liberty and even our practices with each other? Paul's exhortation to the churches is that we are to voluntarily release our rights for the good of one another. So even as Paul says in Romans 15, verse 1, we are to seek to please the other and not simply ourselves. We are to build one another up. Paul's statements are clear and his passion is understandable because Jesus was passionate for the unity of the church. Jesus died so that the church would be one. His body was divided so that we could be united. And so practically speaking, may we not divide the church, but instead may we seek to build the church up. Now at this point, you hear me talking and you're thinking, oh no, the elders are calling us to sacrifice. <laughs> and that's true. We're calling our church family to embrace the call of the Christian life. You know, again, within our church family, we can have people who would urge us as elders to maybe close the doors of the church. We have others in our church family who might urge us to keep the doors open. We have people who would urge us to wear masks, and we have people who would urge us not to. But sacrifice calls us, first and foremost, to consider how to love. And so that's what we want to call our whole church family to. And in what the elders are proposing at this point in time, we believe to be the best for our church family, our local church at this point in time. And we hope that this decision leads you to the throne of grace and leads you to discern how can you best love and serve your brothers and sisters of Ventura, those brothers and sisters with whom you agree and with whom you disagree. Now, I do want to say that these decisions are actually decisions that, that we're only forecasting to the end of December. As we get closer to 2021, we'll let you know what's going on from there. 
but there are things that do need to be known. First off, office hours are going to be sporadic. That doesn't mean that people aren't going to be working. It just means that if you're trying to get into the office, if you're trying to get into the church, please contact me and I can give you a code to get in. Secondly, discipleship groups. They are going to continue. Now, it's going to be up to the leaders to state to their groups how they're going to continue. Some might be in Zoom, some might be in person here at the church, but your group leader will contact you. Also, children's and youth discipleship. Due to volunteer concerns and also safety concerns, we are going to uh, postpone children and youth's discipleship for the month of December. This also includes nursery and sprouts on Sunday mornings, which I know can be a burden uh, to people in the Sunday morning time frame. Now that leads us to Sunday mornings. And there's a couple of principles that I think guide the elders in addition to what I've already stated. One is that we believe in the importance of believers being able to gather if they can. And as a congregational church, many in our church want to gather regularly. Second, we believe in the importance of as many church members as can gather should be welcome to do so. So in saying this, we are not closing our doors. We're going to maintain the same plan as we've had before. We're going to have the 930 service, the 1115 service. We're going to have uh, the distancing taking place, and we're going to have the live stream available to those um, who either can't make it or out of conscience believe they need to stay home. But this does lead us to that second point in the importance of as many church members as can gather being welcome to do so. This has led the elders in the discussion to come to the conclusion that at this point in time, starting this coming Sunday, we are requiring people to wear masks. That means that if you can wear a mask, please wear a mask. Now, I know this may tempt some people to say that they're just not going to come if they have to wear a mask. But I would ask you to reconsider that. You have a privilege of sacrificing for your brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a perfect opportunity to show patience, long-suffering, and endurance. 1 Corinthians 13. These would be things you would miss if you didn't gather with believers. And we also recognize in saying this, there could be some people who are disappointed for testimony's sake to the community, maybe. Disappointed that we're not closing the church doors for a time. There might be disappointment in various ways from people. But I would simply ask that you consider one another. Consider where each other are coming from and consider the Lord who is building up his church. We're seeking to learn how to live with one another the others for whom Christ died, and seeking to learn how to encourage each other in our faith in Jesus Christ. Now again, we're only making these plans as we see to the end of December. More discussions will take place as time goes on, but we pray that our practice and our words with one another reveals our trust in the Lord who is building the church, even in the midst of tense and difficult seasons like 2020. That we recognize Jesus so loves us, and therefore we seek to show that love towards each other. I love you, Ventura. The elders love you. And we pray that we would live and abide in our Lord's love.